Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We do have a short show this week, about five or six minutes shorter than normal, because our PBS stations are in pledge this week, but we do have a brand new show, and it's coming to you from above the bridge. I'm actually a little jealous that Jordan Brown and Jenny Olson recently just got back from a five-day trip in the Upper Peninsula, and you're going to get to see some dog sledding on this week's show and some ice climbing, some things you don't see very often. It is a very cool show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse Offering a variety of meat products Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 and M-53 Just south of Emily City Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. Michigan-based Vanguard has manufactured optics, hunting packs, and accessories for over 30 years. Discover all of our most recent innovations at vanguardworld.us. Downtown Marquette has been home to the start of the UP200 sled dog race since 1990. In that 27 years, it's become quite a tradition for folks to gather here for the opening ceremony, meet the sled dog teams and their mushers, and cheer them on as they begin their 230 mile journey across the northern portion of the UP. As the sun set on February 17th, things were kicking off. This, the downtown start, the mushers all tell us, it, it'll put tears in your eyes, okay? So there's 7,000 people at least, just with the warmer weather, it'll be at least that many cheering on the mushers, and it, it, there's a countdown, it just gets your heart going. Um, and the trail itself goes from Marquette to Grand Marais with some stops. And what I always say is there's probably not another 120 miles of dog sled trail in the Midwest that has more snow. But, you know, even Mother Nature can throw a curve, so. Hi there. So have you guys been to the race before? Yes. Well, was it 10 years ago? Yeah, it's been a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. We're and from Columbus, Ohio, and came up special just for this. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So what do you remember about it last time you are here? Cold. It was much colder <laughs> then. All right. What's your favorite part? Do you follow the dogs along? Or do you just... No, I think we, we just kind of situated ourselves here in downtown Marquette and watched them take off and just enjoyed the, the rush of them running by. Cool. Spectators are a big part of what makes the UP200 race so special. Another important group is the team of veterinarians on hand here. The uh, veterinary team for the race is here to oversee the care of the dogs on the race. We're there to provide any medical care they may need on the trail. We're also there to periodically monitor the dogs at the checkpoint to make certain that we're not uh, seeing any problems that may affect their performance or their safety out on the trail. These dogs run better when it is colder. Generally, we like to see temperatures below 15 degrees. The biggest concern is with the amount of exercising that they're doing is that they're gonna generate a lot of heat from that exercise and it's harder for them to cool down when it's warmer than when it's colder. Okay. And so they have to just go slower and take breaks to allow the dogs to cool off for the conditions. So you might expect longer race time then? A little uh, bit? Hard to predict right now, you know, so uh, hard to speculate on that. Um, well, I guess we'll just see. 
As the 7 p.m. start time drew near, the streets started filling in. Race fans were gathering at the start line to join in the fun and to meet Seamus, the race mascot. Governor Rick Snyder and his wife were here enjoying the festivities too. Well, Governor Snyder, you're here at the UP yeah. 200 dog sled racing. Well, this is fabulous. This is pure Michigan. Talk about Michigan outdoors. Uh, here at the UP 200, wonderful tradition. People are so excited to watch the dogs and the sleds take off. But if you think about it, earlier today we went to Munising, to the ice fest, and saw people climbing these ice curtains and such. More pure Michigan. So what we're seeing is it grow faster and faster, more and more people coming to enjoy the outdoors in the Upper Peninsula and all our state. We should be so proud of that. The pride in our state was well represented here at the opening ceremonies. Finishing touches were put on the track as things kicked off. And the rockets red flare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, save us as stars and glow, and the rocket flare, for the land. dogs are highly trained athletes and once the race starts they're all business. A lot of excitement. You will be surprised when the dogs run down the trail they are not barking. You will hear them barking and yowling and jumping and getting with excitement as they're getting ready to go and as soon as they leave the start chute it's quiet and all you see is the headlamp of the musher bobbing up and down as they're going down the trail. Sled dog teams leave every two minutes and the first team was approaching the start line. Ladies and gentlemen are you ready? Bienvenue à Denis Tremblay from Saint-Michel des Sables, Quebec. He is here again, his sled banner from the Gwen Sawyer Vet Clinic. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Allez, allez, allez! And they're off. It's the UP 200 Sled Dog Championship in Marquette, and we're officially underway. Denis Tremblay from Quebec, the number one. There are a few misconceptions about the sled dogs and mushers that run in these races. Brenda shared a few of them with us. They're so small, the dogs are really tiny. They're athletes, they are muscular, they have been built and trained for this kind of thing. Do the dogs get abused? Never once. They get more love than some people's children probably. You'll see the mushers at the checkpoints crawling in with them, rubbing stuff in their paws, massaging their muscles, making them feel relaxed and helping them recover and be the best athlete they can be. Three, two, one. UP 200 teams start in Marquette and head east and north, making their first mandatory stop after a 64-mile leg. There's a team of judges that will follow the two-day race and check in along the way. 
myself and three other judges monitor the race. We go along to the checkpoints as the dogs are running and the teams go through. If there's problems or issues that need to be resolved, that's what we're there for. So okay. we just basically monitor the situation. If there's mandatory rest stops throughout the race that they accumulate so many hours of rest. And the vets are there right along the th uh, through the race to, to show them and monitor the dogs to make sure they're, they're in good health. And, um, it's definitely, a, there's a lot of strategy into it with the teams as far as how long they want to rest their dogs. Uh, with this warmer weather, that's going to relate to their strategy. They don't want to be running in the middle of the day in the heat, obviously. So if their dogs can be resting when it's hot and sunny, they'll have a good sleep and, and probably get back on the trail in the evening. The race spans two overnights, racing from Friday night all day Saturday and finishing back in Marquette. Sunday morning sometime. Okay. So and with the high of 50 degrees forecasted for tomorrow and sunny, it's, it's probably going to knock the snow down pretty good, unfortunately. Well, the finish line, if, if it were to finish where it's supposed to, it's just down here at the harbor. Oh, okay. Um, but if, if the way conditions are looking, we may back things up a little bit. But okay. that's a decision we're going to have to make as the weekend goes on. So. Well, the temperatures ended up climbing into the 60s over the next two days, melting much of the snow in the downtown Marquette area. Race officials made the decision to end the race 14 miles short of the originally planned finish line in order to bring all the teams back in safely and without injury. The team wearing bib number one ended up with the winning time. Dennis Tremblay from Quebec crossed the finish line at 9.35 Sunday morning with a total trail time of 22 hours, 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Congratulations to all who participated in both the UP200 and the Midnight Run sled dog races this year. What a wonderful tradition to keep alive here in Michigan's Out of Doors. After checking out the UP200, Jordan and I headed down the road to Munising for the annual Ice Fest that happens here at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. Participants have the opportunity to check out new ice climbing gear, see demos, and sign up for classes at the event headquarters located in downtown Munising. This year's Ice Fest would look a little different, with record high temps creating unsafe ice conditions. This year, uh, the Ice Fest um, started on Tuesday but as the week progressed, it's gotten quite a bit warmer. And as a result, uh, yesterday we had to close one of the climbs uh, because the ice was deemed unsafe. And potentially we're getting ready to close another one of the more popular climbing uh, areas called the dryer hose, just because of the holes developing in that column of ice. Uh, talking to some ice climbers this morning who went out in this little bowl here, I came back and said just about all those climbs were too, just too soft and, and just really running uh, a lot of water off of them and so it makes it softer and, and they start to deteriorate and break off so mm. it's a little bit unusual this is probably the warmest ice fest I've worked in the last 18 years and uh, unfortunately you know there's a lot of disappointment but you know there's no control over it really. Folks were making the most of the less than desirable conditions here at the climbing sites. Climbers with all different levels of experience were here with instructors, some trying their hands at first time ice climbing and others honing their skills. So what do you think of all this? How did it oh, this is, it, it's a great experience. Each year's different. This year obviously it's warmer. We've been up here when it's been below zero. Uh, but just being out obviously in the UP and, and ice climbing, uh, taking advantage of everything Michigan has to offer. It's just, yeah, it's just a great experience. And a lot of the kids are from out of state and have never done anything like this before. So it introduces them to a whole different perspective on the outdoors, particularly winter sports. Uh, I teach in hospitality, tourism management. One of my keystone classes is adventure tourism. So we study uh, tourists as far as why do they get into ice climbing or mountain climbing or scuba diving? Why do they engage in these activities that could be life-threatening if things go wrong? But So we study the risks and rewards and then also I take them out to actually experience some of these activities for themselves. Great. And what are, what are they usually, what are some of their reactions when they do this for the first time? Oh, it's, they love it. <laughs> uh, we do get students that come back year after year. Uh, this just happens to be most of the group is first timers, uh, so it's a great experience for them. We've already got some that are saying they're coming back next year, uh, and we have a lot alumni join us occasionally too. So it's a it's a great thing. 
So what's your name? Kip Wallace. Where are you from, Kip? Uh, Chicago. Chicago, cool. Is this your first time here? Uh, yes, first time to fix your It's beautiful. Awesome. And you actually climbed, learned how to climb today? Uh, no, I learned how to climb in a gym, but I learned how to ice climb today. Nice. What do you think of all this? I think it's awesome. It's yeah. really fun, yeah. Not only is it uh, is it really beautiful, but it's it's fun because you get to kind of pick your own route in ice climbing, kind of make your own way through, and uh, I don't know, it's just a really new experience. It's good. Cool. All right. So you'll do it again? Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Wish it was a little colder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think all the climbers wished it was a little colder today. Record-breaking temps affected both the Ice Fest and the UP200 this year. It will be interesting to see how weather plays a part in next year's winter events here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week, and a special thank you to all the folks that participated in Big Buck Night East last week at Outdoorama. That was a ton of fun, great crowd, and tons of big deer. That show is going to air the last Thursday in March, and then the first Thursday in April will be our Big Buck Night West that we'll be taping at the Ultimate Sports Show in Grand Rapids in just a couple of weeks. And make sure that you are joining us over the next couple of weeks because lots of good stuff from the Upper Peninsula and all around the state. And as our PBS stations are in pledge, if you miss one week or another week, make sure you join us online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We're on there every week with full episodes of the show and some other stuff as well. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Showspan, producing consumer shows that include the ultimate sports show in Grand Rapids. Over 350 exhibitors, outdoor gear, boats, seminars, Lake Ultimate, and Big Buck Night. The ultimate sports show March 16th through the 19th at the DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. By the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout.
out in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Calamus St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man 